In this video, let us consider the microscopic features of cerebellum. I am grateful to Dr. Michael Horsch of University of Michigan Medical School for providing the images of histology sections. Cerebellum is located in the posterior cranial fossa. It has two hemispheres connected by a central bormis. Like any other part of central nervous system, cerebellum is also covered by three layers of meninges. In this section of cerebellum under low power magnification, we can see the surface depressions or fissures shown by the arrows separating the folia. Cerebellum shows an outer convoluted cortex containing neurons and a central core of white matter containing ascending and descending fibers. One of the characteristic features of the cerebellum is the uniform thickness of the cortex irrespective of the site of section, unlike in case of cerebral cortex. There are three layers in the cerebellar cortex. Outermost layer is the pale staining molecular layer. Middle layer is a layer of Purkinje cells. Innermost layer is the densely basophilic granular layer. There are many types of cells in the cerebellar cortex. They can be grouped as excitatory circuit neurons, which include Purkinje cells and granular cells, inhibitory interneurons, which include stellate cells, basket cells, and Golgi cells, comparatively rare other types of neurons like Lugaro cells and brush cells, and lastly, the neuroglial cells, of which the characteristic neuroglial cell here is the Bergman's glia, which are the modified astrocytes, and then we also find the regular glial cells which are found elsewhere in the CNS. Molecular layer is the pale staining superficial layer, which mainly consists of neural processes and it has very few cells. The neural processes found in this layer include dendrites of the Purkinje cells, parallel fibers which arise from the axons of the granule cells, and the climbing fibers. It also has cell bodies and processes of two types of interneurons, namely stellate cells which are found close to the surface of the cerebellum and basket cells which are found in the deeper part of the molecular layer. Both these cells are involved in feed-forward inhibition of Purkinje cells. In addition, we also find neuroglial cells in this layer. The second layer is the Purkinje cell layer. It has a single layer of large flask shaped Purkinje cells which have flattened dendritic tree in the molecular layer and they have a basal axon which forms the sole cortical output. In addition to these Purkinje cells, we also find few granular cells, Golgi cells and Berg Bergman glial cells in this layer. Here. We can see the flattened dendritic tree of the Purkinje cells in the molecular layer. The proximal branches are smooth and they synapse with climbing fibers, whereas distal smaller branches have numerous spines on their surface and they synapse with parallel fibers. Innermost layer of the cortex is the densely basophilic granular layer, named due to the numerous nuclei cilia. Although cerebellum forms only about one-tenth the weight of the entire brain, it has more than 50% of cells in the brain due to densely packed granular cells which are seen in this layer. This layer consists of cell bodies and dendrites and beginning of the axons of granular cells, cell bodies, dendrites and axons of the Golgi cells, mossy fiber rosettes and synaptic glomeruli, climbing fibers en route to molecular layer, along with neuroglia and the blood vessels. In addition to the cells mentioned before, there are cigar-shaped inhibitory Lugaro cells in the Purkinje cell layer and unipolar brush cells which are seen in the granular layer in the areas which receive input from vestibular nuclei. Central core of white matter of the cerebellum divides like branches of a tree described as arbor vitae cerebelli. 
The white matter contains both ascending and descending fibers to and from the cortex. In addition, we find neuroglial cells and blood vessels. Buried in the depth of white matter, we also find four pairs of intracerebellar nuclei. However, those nuclei are not seen in this section. This is a Luxol blue stained section of cerebellum showing the myelinated fibers in the white matter of cerebellum. Ascending fibers are broadly grouped into two types. First type is the climbing fibers which climb straight to the molecular layer and these fibers are the attendants coming from contralateral inferior olivary nuclear complex found in the medulla oblongata. Each fi climbing fiber gives a few branches and each branch synapses with dendrites of a single Purkinje cell. Thus, a single climbing fiber activates a microzone of few Purkinje cells. The second type of fibers are the mossy fibers that include all the remaining afferents to the cerebellum. They give rise to 50 to 100 collaterals. Each of these collaterals terminate as a rosette in the granular layer and they form synaptic glomeruli with the dendrites of granule cells and Golgi cells. Axons of the granule cells divide into two parallel fibers, each of which synapses with dendrites of 500 to 1000 Purkinje cells. Thus, each mossy fiber by its branching and through parallel fibers can activate hundreds of thousands of Purkinje cells. Descending fibers in the white matter are the axons of Purkinje cells, which are the only cells carrying output signal from cortex. Most of these terminate in the intracerebellar nuclei, whereas few fibers terminate directly in the vestibular nuclei. So quickly recalling what we have seen so far, cerebellum has an outer cortex of uniform thickness and a central core of white matter. Cortex has a molecular layer, Purkinje cell layer and granular layer from outside inwards. Purkinje cells form the only source of cortical output. Other neurons in the cortex are the stellate and basket cells found in the molecular layer and the granular and Golgi cells found in the granular layer. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed this video. You can also visit this site for similar histology videos.